Hi, I'm Frank Avalon. I'm a senior and supervising attorney at the Lawyers Committee for Better Housing. Since 2008, LCBH has been combating the adverse effects of the foreclosure crisis on renters in Chicago. Our expertise in landlord-tenant issues has uniquely positioned us at the forefront of the foreclosure crisis as it affects these renters. What happens to a neighborhood when multiple buildings fall to foreclosure and the tenants are evicted and displaced? The entire neighborhood is impacted. The consequences of high levels of foreclosure in a community include displaced residents, vacant buildings, lower property values, increased crimes, and it makes the neighborhood prone to gentrification. Through a series of annual reports, LCBH has chronicled the foreclosure crisis and its impact on renters. Our research has informed community advocates and policymakers on the issues brought on by the crisis that have plagued our communities and has led to huge losses in affordable housing. Foreclosure has a greater impact on renter-occupied housing, displacing more renters than homeowners. They make up half the population in Chicago, renters, many of whom are being kicked to the curb by landlords now facing foreclosure. LCBH found greater risks to rental housing stability in neighborhoods on Chicago's south and west sides. The report shows the neighborhoods hit hardest are low-income minority communities. Banks all too often gave renters notices that threatened evictions, board-ups, and lockouts if the renters did not leave. Nearly one in ten eviction filings were foreclosure-related, clogging up our courts. These cases were not filed because of any wrongdoing by the tenant. In addition to losing their homes, tenants who were evicted are often uprooted from their neighborhoods and forced to switch their children's school. Eviction trials are fast. Many trials last only a few minutes and provide very little time for the tenants to move before the sheriff sends them out. Renters often lose their security deposits at a time when financial resources are crucial. Many evictions appear on credit reports and tenant screening reports, making it even more difficult to find new housing. Closure, owners often abandon the property and lenders refuse to take responsibility for maintaining the buildings. Over 80% of apartment building foreclosures resulted in bank-owned properties or properties owned by guarantors such as Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Banks systematically emptied these foreclosed buildings, leaving tenants with nowhere to go and leaving the buildings vacant for months or years. To help address some of these issues, a coalition of community-based organizations, unions, and policy groups was formed called the Keep Chicago Renting Coalition. LCBH spearhead a policy committee that crafted a new ordinance designed to increase local rental protections, keep people in their homes, and keep rental property in productive use. After more than a year of organizing, tenant activists weren't about to miss today's vote. 45 yays, 4 nays. In 2013, the Keep Chicago Renting Ordinance was passed by an overwhelming majority. You're probably asking yourself, isn't the foreclosure crisis over? The good news is that, yes, the number of new foreclosure filings is back to pre-crisis levels. In Illinois, part of the problem with, um, with our state is it takes a really long time to go through the foreclosure process, 673 days on average. However, the number of properties exiting Illinois' lengthy foreclosure process and becoming bank-owned remains at 2010 levels, and there is still a tremendous amount of work to do. LCBH continues to respond to the ongoing foreclosure crisis, assisting renters with the complicated legal issues associated with living in a foreclosed building.
That brings us to today and a client of ours that I'd like you to meet. Mars Colton contacted LCBH through our Tenants in Foreclosure Helpline. We provided Mars with information about her rights and responsibilities and told her to call us back if anything untoward happened. Well, when the apartment she was living in was foreclosed, an apartment she'd lived in for nearly 10 years, the new bank owners gave her a termination notice and Mars called us back. Mars is with us tonight to tell you what happened. Good evening, my name is Mars Carlton. I'm here to tell you how the Lawyers Committee for Better Housing helped my family through a protracted, ugly, uncertain housing crisis that I found my son and I in through no fault of our own. My little boy and I were living in a two-bedroom in Hull Park for almost 10 years, renting from an out-of-state condo owner. She never raised my rent because she knew I was a single mom with a special needs child and my availability to work because of that was limited, so I didn't have a lot of money. So she also knew that if she raised my rent, I'd probably have to move out, and then in return, she would have to find more people. Um, to pay her back for not raising my rent, I was an excellent tenant. Uh, I was a good neighbor. I took care of my unit on, on my own. I paid on time. I helped shovel snow. I fed the alley cats and all of this stuff that she did. But my Arizona landlord, bless her heart, was not able to pay her mortgage, and she went bankrupt. I heard that even if I kept on paying rent to her, I could still get kicked out at any time. So I didn't know what to do. Should I stay and hope some new owner will offer to continue renting to me? Would I even be able to afford a higher rent? Or, as many of my neighbors did in similar situations, should I just move as soon as something affordable and acceptable showed up? Then the part-time job that I had ended, and then I really got scared. Everyone and every place I asked for advice told me something different. Even to the housing organizations, my choices and my rights in this situation were very, very not clear at all. Um, should I stay? and try to save my money to buy the union eventually? Should I leave before a sheriff turns up with an eviction notice? Should I start checking out the women's shelters? One housing rights group told me that because I had stopped paying rent when this happened, because the banks and the courts had not contacted me, so I didn't know who to pay. Um, a housing, other housing rights group told me that my child and I were squatters with no legal right to be on the premises of the building that we had helped maintain and lived in as a family for 10 years. How does a solo mother trying to find work, still paying the utilities, making my repairs out of pocket, paying for when the heat broke the day before Thanksgiving and I need to replace the motherboard in my furnace, how do you do all that for 10 years and then suddenly become a squatter? Thank goodness I found online the Lawyers Committee for Better Housing. They let me know that first my landlord would need to give me 30 days notice to move, and only after that would I be given 90 days notice. They further told me that if the bank tried to force me out without following those rules, that these lawyers were prepared, prepared to help me take the bank to court for wrongful eviction procedures. Their absolute clarity of the new ordinance, since they themselves had been involved in the process, this allowed me to make a plan for my family, and it lessened my anxiety tremendously. I chose to stay put, to save my money until a new bank or a new owner asked for rent. And instead of moving, I focused on finding stable employment in order to have better choices for the next day. And that was a decision I would not have been able to make if I didn't have the facts, which I got from this organization. And Frank. It sounds simple now, but it was very scary for a number of years. It did stretch out for a couple of years. I would come home from job interviews or the unemployment office or from my son's therapy sessions. And we'd find notices on the door 
my door, the building door outside upstairs. No threatening eviction. Take to our door and to our building. Patricia Fraun first and then later Frank Avalo always responded to my fearful phone calls with confidence and assurance and they coached me about how and when to respond to these threats, what to do, when to ignore it. Having them accessible allowed me to focus on finding work and raising my son. So by the time I did receive the anticipated and dreaded 90 days notice, I was in the process of starting a new job and my son was now stable in school. My case turned out to be a strong test of the new ordinance for the tenants that have been left in the fray of foreclosures by the property owners. Frank Avalon was clear at every turn that the decision to pursue the court case or to settle was up to me. Right up to the end, he was giving me exact details about how each choice would play out detail for detail so that I could make the right decision for myself. But I agreed with this organization's goal of trying to send a message to these banks they do need to follow these procedures to respect the tenants instead of letting their little minions harass us till we vacate. And then if they do pay tenants, if, I'm sorry, if they do not pay tenants, the amount of the building fees that are stated in the city ordinance, that they will be sued. And so we did just that. Yes, court cases are scary and they take too long. And I knew that if I lost, I'd probably get nothing at all. But we took it as far as we needed to send them that message that if tenants follow our rules for leaving within 90 days notice, then the banks need to follow their rules for paying us the amount determined by the court or face getting sued for its own. I cannot thank Frank Gallon, Christopher Tompkins, and Jeremy Dunnett enough for being staunch advocates for people like myself. They didn't just get it done. They helped me to feel safe instead of threatened, and they supported instead of isolated. <coughs> when people contribute time and funds to this organization, these people turn that directly into caring, heartfelt, pit bull legal support for families like mine. So I thank them with all of my heart, and I thank you for listening to my stories.